Hi, I'm Robert Donnelly. In early 20th century Portland, gambling dens and brothels and unlicensed bars operated virtually uninhibited by police as long as vice racketeers paid scheduled kickbacks to key local law enforcement officials. Despite reform efforts, some municipal officials tolerated, sanctioned, and even profited from the city's lucrative vice economy. So by the 1950s, word of Portland's reputation as a wide open city whose uh, officials entertained payoffs, this reputation had trickled up to Seattle where racketeers with help from Teamsters Union officials were exploiting that city's criminal operations. So by 1954, Teamsters officials and local racketeers with help from the Multnomah County District Attorney were operating profitably in Portland. In April 1956, investigative reporters Wallace Turner and William Lambert over at the Oregonian newspaper using information provided by Portland's infamous crime boss James Elkins, the reporters exposed the city's organized crime rackets as well as the city's law enforcement officials that tolerated and profited from those crime rackets. Now the Oregonian reporters also unwrapped a scheme by Teamsters Union officials to control the state's alcohol sales and distribution, as well as profit from the city's vice rackets. Now government officials had been concerned for some years about uh, labor racketeering. In fact, the FBI and the U.S. Senate had been investigating the questionable organizational tactics by local Teamster bosses not to mention the illegal activities of the union's most prominent leaders, President Dave Beck and Vice Presidents Jimmy Hoffa and Frank Brewster. By 1957, the U.S. Senate Select Committee on Improper Activities in the Labor or Management Field, better known as the McClellan Committee, actually chaired by Senator John McClellan from Arkansas, and his chief counsel was Robert Kennedy, uh, the committee discovered that Portland experienced the same incidents of labor racketeering and organized crime and political and law enforcement corruption as the larger cities in America like New York City and Seattle and Chicago and Los Angeles and Detroit. So the Senate committee concluded that Portland not only had a local crime problem but also had a situation that had serious national ramifications. So Dark Rose focuses in on the Portland Vice scandal of 1956. And there are two themes in the book. First, as we build up to 1956, is the failure of progressive reform. Second, Portland's vice scene and its entanglement with labor racketeering made the city crucial to investigating, if not unraveling, a national crime network. So the case in Portland demonstrated patterns of vice and corruption that were consistent with larger cities in the United States and reveals a generally unknown but truly fascinating element of the local history of a great American city. I'm really excited about the sources that I was able to find while researching and writing Dark Rose. You know, the problem with writing a book about uh, organized crime and political corruption and law enforcement corruption is that corrupt law enforcement officials and politicians and uh, criminals don't necessarily keep uh, records of their illegal transactions. So I do rely on the testimony of criminals and I do rely on the Turner Lambert reports 1956 and at the time those reports were actually criticized for uh, using information uh, by criminals, provided by criminals. Uh, was it even speculation? So, since then, however, I was able to find plenty of other sources, uh, credible sources, incredible sources, uh, to corroborate the Turner and Lambert reports. Naturally, I spent a lot of time with the McClellan Committee transcripts, but I was able to also fly to Boston to research Robert Kennedy's papers. Now, remember, Robert Kennedy was chief counsel for the McClellan Committee. And his book, actually, The Enemy Within, about the national investigation, had a wealth of information about Portland and the Portland case and about James Elkins and, uh, for that matter, his relationship with uh, Wallace Turner and William Lambert. 
Fortunately, I was also able to go to Arkadelphia, Arkansas to research John McClellan's papers at Wachita Baptist University. And the amount of information there and in Robert Kennedy's papers and the fact that the McClellan Committee started with the Portland investigation just shows that Portland was central to this, uh, to the unraveling of this national crime network. I had the opportunity to interview some really great people. Wallace Turner, for example, uh, the Oregonian reporter. I actually just recently passed away. He was very gracious with his time and his information uh, and his insight into the local investigation as well as the national investigation. I also met Arthur Kaplan, who was a state attorney before he was hired away by Robert Kennedy to help with the national investigation. And then I also met Sid Lezak, who was very gracious with his time and his information. Sid Lezak was actually the U.S. attorney for the state of Oregon, and he provided some really nice insights into the uh, into Robert Kennedy's investigation in Portland. Finally, I want to share with you a couple of unique sources that I use in Dark Rose. First. FBI documents. Through the Freedom of Information Act, I was able to get thousands of pages on the FBI's investigation of labor racketeering in Portland, in the Northwest, and throughout the nation. And then there's the King Tower tapes, recorded in the King Tower apartments just off Burnside in Portland. In 1956, James Elkins handed Turner and Lambert the King Tower tapes. They were wiretap recordings of conversations between Multnomah County District Attorney William Langley, Teamster Organizer Thomas Maloney, Seattle Vice Racketeer Joseph McLaughlin, as well as others including a corrupt OLCC agent. A friend of mine in Portland actually found a copy of the tapes and he gave them to me. What an incredible source. So Dark Rose is a history of Portland's seedy side, particularly the vice scandal of 1956, which reveals, to borrow a line from an old Oregonian editorial, which reveals the stench behind the roses.